scoot down off the couch. I want to roll over to that computer now. Mike? I don't have a job for you. You? You? You don't have a job. It's 10.30. It's 10.30. Martha, I didn't know you came in. It's almost 10.30 and I have to leave soon. Let's get moving with the bath. You need one. Up on the table and onto your right side, please. Mmm, what's that smell? That's for your lunch. Tomato soup and a sandwich made from some of that leftover roast beef. Oh, the roast beef? I remember that from last night. See how far you can roll on your right side so I can check your skin in a few places. Martha, I'm feeling better today. It seems like, it seems like I'm thinking more clearly. The doctor is cutting back on your pain meds. He said, if you need more, just call. Today and tomorrow, I'll be rearranging the furniture. I'll get the hospital bed out of here and your regular bed back in place. The doctor says if you practice walking, your back will continue to improve. This may be our last bath together, Mr. D. Do you have any more information on Emily, Martha? I'm beginning to feel like I can make some calls. Maybe even go out if that can help find her. Mr. Duckworth, this is the first time since your accident where I feel you can actually understand and remember what I'm telling you. First of all, you were almost killed in a helicopter accident. I don't have time to give you the whole story right now. There's an aging soap opera star on the West End Avenue who's telling me if I don't help him clean this apartment today, he'll be evicted. Anyway, I'm sure Emily would be glad to fill in the details for you one more time. Emily? I thought we had an argument and she left me. We'll get to Emily in a moment. Right now, it's more important that I make certain you understand why you can't leave the apartment. Maybe for another week or two. Week or two? Listen close, because these are the basics of your situation as I see it. Your left arm is just out of a full cast, and that right leg cast was removed yesterday. That one's starting at your fucking ending around your butt. You've had three broken ribs, and according to the doctor, you've had some head trauma. I don't know where you're getting your ideas about Emily leaving you. It could be the continued effects of the coma, or confusion from taking all those painkillers, or just the confusion from the weeks when you were asleep more than you were awake. You'll be glad to know that I expect Emily to be here this evening, after her work just like every day for the past five weeks. A couple of items to mention since you're becoming more alert. I've added Saturday to my scheduled time here, and I expect it will stay that way for a while. After I leave this morning, you can take care of your shaving. You should wash your hair in the sink. It won't be easy, but it will give you something to do. Just remember, the doctor says to try to walk as much as possible as long as you stay in the apartment. Stay up and out of bed as long as you can stand it each day. Your company's insurance is paying for my time as a personal care aide, so that's nothing to worry about. 
Thanks, Martha. You've been a great help to me. If I didn't want to help you, I wouldn't. So you should know that I like working for you and Max. Anyway, Abby expects me to help as much as I can. You're right, Martha. I want to get well soon and start taking care of myself. The sooner I get well, the sooner I can find Emily. I feel so bad about how we broke up and how I... Wow, Mr. D, you are still pretty confused and forgetful. Try to remember, Emily will be here this evening. You two are getting along just fine. You need someone to talk to, but I'm not that person. I'd better call the doctor also and see what she suggests. I'm leaving now. We need to get you some friends or something. Oh, speaking of friends, there's one more thing. Abby called yesterday. He bought you a TV for the apartment. He hopes that it will help bring you some entertainment. TV? I don't need a TV. I use my PC for news and to play video games. Sure, Mr. D. Actually, it's more for Emily. She's been spending a lot of time here with you lately. When I discussed it with Abby, he wanted to help out. He could imagine the time going slowly here for Emily while you're asleep. He just wants you to please consider it a gift. Anyway, I'll be here tomorrow in time to help you when the delivery people arrive. They're supposed to deliver the TV between 9 and 11. Whatever. It's already after 11.30. You don't have a job. I should call work and tell them. I'll be better soon. Eastern News Service, may I help you? Laura? It's Ben. How are you this morning? Ben? My. Haven't heard from you since before your accident. I just wanted to update the boss on my recovery, Laura. I'm fine. Miss you, Ben. Hope you'll get well soon. Emily has been calling in to update us. Did you know? No, I didn't, Laura. Guess I've been out of it since the accident. Okay, Ben. I'll get Mr. Nicholson. Nicholson here. Mike, it's Ben. Just checking in. Hope you'll have some work for me soon. You'll be working again, Ben. But your last doctor's statement said you'd be out another six weeks. You have to take it easy, Ben. Mike, she's being too cautious. I have an appointment to see her next week. I imagine when she sees me, she'll agree. I'll be ready in half the time. That's great, Ben. I can't get you any assignments without a doctor's statement that says you're ready to work. Oh, yeah? Big news. The Eastern News Service has been bought by another company. I don't have all the details now. But we'll be moving the main office from New York to Washington. Hopefully by the end of next month. I just want to get it over with. Oh? That's news, all right. Yeah, Ben. I didn't say it was good news. I'm wondering what it's all about, too. Maybe they want us to do more politics. I wonder how I'll be able to work for you after the move. I mean, at least here I do sometimes make staff meetings and get in supervisory time with you, boss. In all honesty, I'm not sure how it's going to work out for any of us, Ben. We're going to have to wait and see what happens. This move has come rather suddenly for me too. You just get better. Okay? Okay, boss. I'll call back next week. Good luck to you on the move. Look, Mr. First of all, you were almost killed. You should wash your hair in the sink. I don't have time to give you the whole story. It will give you something. There's an aging soap opera star in the West Bend Avenue who is telling me if I don't help him clean the sink, I will be in the apartment. Stay up. Stay out of bed. As long as you can stand it each day. Your company's insurance is paying for my time as a person. Not so there's nothing to worry there's about. Nothing to worry. Good evening, babe. Martha tells me you're showing definite improvement today. I was so glad to hear that. 
I have a small surprise for dinner tonight. Do you realize that until today I'd forgotten what I do for a living? Dear, tell me, what happened? Please, what happened to me? Oh, mine, Ben. I'm just relieved you're back here、Here's、with me in that version. You had just wrapped up a five-day report from Kazakhstan. You and your photographer Sarah Cunningham were being lifted one at a time by line into a helicopter when a storm hit. Sarah was already in the copter, and you were hanging underneath when the helicopter began to rotate out of control. It crashed, killing Sarah and the copter crew. Sarah, I remember Sarah. Then you were lucky that your guide Marco was able to convince the people who found you into taking you to medical care and not to a morgue. That's the story I heard. Taka white is body. Move, no. Move, no. Uri, uri. No, oh, 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 please. He needs medical help. When the copter went out of control and you were pulled high into the air and then came down enough to drag you through some tree chops, the line broke just before the crash. That fact saved your life. When the line broke, you fell through more trees to the ground. I had no idea. Ha! I really was a reporter. You are a journalist, babe. A great journalist who enjoys his career. And you've been working hard all day, Emily, while I've shut myself in this apartment. You're the one who needs support. I'm doing fine. I'm so happy to see that your recovery is beginning. Things will be improving for you soon. Count on it. The problem is, I'm getting ready for October. It starts next week, and it's my busy month. I may not be available as often until as late as December. I feel our time is precious right now, so I arrange for us to have a quiet evening at home together. Hope you're up to it. Right on time.